Welcome back to the channel. So it's Tuesday afternoon. And the Masons came here uh, to start laying the block. Show you a little bit. They just started. So we'll show you how, how they start and what they do after. So first they shoot their laser to uh, get the elevations, the height, make sure everything is level from that first row. They lay out the corner, all the four corners, in this case it's a rectangular raised ranch, so it's gonna be four corners. Uh, and then on top of that, there's gonna be the four chapter. So they lay out the four corners, make sure the length and width is the same, which in this case, like I said, it's a rectangle, so it's a 36 by 50 house. They lay their corners out. Make sure the house is square. String their lines. And then uh, start laying block. I'm using 10 inch block, so they're eight by 10 by 18 length. And then my top row is gonna be an eight inch block to give me a lip for my four inch concrete slab that I'll be pouring. Give it basically a step so it doesn't settle there. Minimizing cracking, I'll end up reinforcing that slab with half inch rebar all around I'll tie it together and probably drill into that uh, 8 inch block just to give it more strength that way the rebar just doesn't settle so it's all gonna be reinforced with that rebar inside the blocks will probably go I don't know maybe every six six to eight feet with the rebar tie everything together and then pour the slab which that's gonna happen in a couple weeks once I get enough fill to backfill everything to the proper grade. And then another probably six inches of gravel run across or uh, I think they're calling number two stone, round gravel that compacts very well. But I gotta be, I gotta be four feet from the bottom of the footer to the spot where I'm going to be back filling. So I've got 40 inches. That's where I got to be with my soil when I backfill. So that last 8 inch block which will be added after, that'll be exposed. So I'll have 8 inches exposed of a uh, block and the rest is going to be buried 48 inches all the way down to the footer that's going to happen all the way around which in this case in front of this house here there's going to be gravel so for the driveway so it's going to be filled probably two feet with extra soil and then uh run across the rest Nice crisp line. That's how it's done. Every row, they step up, they change the string, move it up one, and uh, go based on that green line. I definitely have a lot of fill to do. I don't have a lot here. You gotta start looking for fill to fill in there and then start compacting it with a tamper probably get my machine in there my skid steer and start running back and forth with it 
hopefully in a couple weeks settle maybe get some rain hopefully that'll help a little bit but definitely got to run back and forth with that machine once i get backfill on the inside and the outside that way i'm not pushing against one side and the other side will bulge and crack so i gotta do those things carefully and especially now that the fact that i can't do it right away the fact that it's still curing concrete cures for a while so don't want to do it when the joints are still moist because that'll shift the wall real quick Form of an artist, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have to be. a quick walk around where they have started laying already we got the concrete mixer right there I brought them a uh, 300 gallon tote filled it with water so they're able to have water I don't have water here yet no connection so had to go the extra mile get one of those things good thing I have two of those for these types of instances, very good, uh, very good thing to have. You get portable water anywhere, pretty much. Fill that one site, and drive it over, and put on some blocks, pallets in this case, end block. There you have it. The fact that I'm, uh, I'm so much higher than I want it to be, well not that much higher, about 8 inches to 10 inches higher than I want it to be, it's still I guess significant when you're talking uh, this elevation here. I actually just had a thought and I might do it. I've seen houses that have large, uh, large stones around their driveways if they want to build up the grade. So right here in front of the garage this is where my parking area is going to be I might be able to use depending on how many how many rocks I can find like that that are flat I might be able to split them in half just to make them a little smaller but I thought about uh, stacking them stacking them next to the driveway that would be right here So that's the house. We're about uh, 30 to 40 feet away from the house. And I'm thinking I might be able to put some rocks right here to the property line, a few feet away from the property line, and run it along the property line there. That'll give me enough uh, room, probably good, good 15 feet away from the house that I can still put a driveway in. But just stack those that way I can build up the grade and don't have to uh, grade everything slowly and then kind of go down really fast it's not gonna look good it's not practical for for anything really for mowing uh, and for aesthetics too you want to have a slight pitch and here I don't think I'll have enough because I want to save that tree so that stone option might be an option we'll see we'll uh, once we get some fill back, we'll see how it goes, and uh, I'll update you then. But stay tuned. Once they're done with this, they're gonna pour uh, pour the cores in uh, every four to six feet, I believe, and put anchor bolts, and then part of the foundation. So stay tuned. Subscribe, like these videos. Follow me on this journey.
thanks for stopping by.